If you're currently editing in DaVinci Resolve 16 and experiencing slow, laggy, unsmooth playback, then believe me, I know exactly just how frustrating that can be, especially when you're working to a deadline and it just completely disrupts your editing flow. So in this video, I'm gonna go through my top five features which are built into DaVinci Resolve in order to help speed up that process so you get smooth playback all the time. So just before we get started guys, my name is Alex Cameron. I am a DaVinci Resolve certified trainer and we're delivering all sorts of different videos like this on the channel all the time. So if you do get a second, just hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on other videos that are coming up in the near future. And it's great to have you here as part of our community on this channel. So thank you so much indeed if you do hit that button for me. Now let's look at DaVinci Resolve. So here we are, we have a particular project and I'm in the edit page. This particular project is been shot in a mixture of different resolutions. We've actually got some raw clips here from a drone, uh, which were shot in Cinema DNG. We also have some shots from H.264 cameras and so forth. And it's been graded, it's been edited, and actually this whole thing is helpful to show us the sort of playback issues we could possibly come across. Now, I am working on a slightly higher spec machine, so just be aware my results might not be the same exactly for you. If you're working on a smaller machine, you might not be able to get native playback straight away. If I hit playback, for the most part, I get playback right away. You do see I occasionally run into some issues here, especially, in fact, there's a lot of noise reduction on this particular clip. So. You can see up here, if we pay our attention to our GPU status indicator and our frames per second, you can see the type of performance we're getting. Now at the moment I'm getting full playback, which is absolutely fine, but it might be that yours is red and a number that's less than your current frames per second for your timeline. And if that's the case, then I feel you, let's get into some of these tips. So the first thing that you can try that's built into DaVinci Resolve is the proxy mode. First of all, it's very easy to get to. Just come up to playback, come down to proxy mode, come across and choose your proxy resolution. So you can go to half resolution, you can go to quarter resolution. So let's just change it straight away to quarter resolution, for example, and playback. And let me just do that little sequence again and hit playback. So I have now managed to successfully get a reasonable GPU and frames per second playback. No problem at all, having just dropped my resolution to quarter. The great thing about this is it is just a proxy mode and whether you're in proxy mode or not, this is just a playback setting. So regardless if I forget to turn that off and I go to deliver, do not worry, DaVinci Resolve is not gonna render out a lower quality version. It's gonna render out the correct version. This is purely a playback setting. So that's one of the first things I would try because it's the very fastest thing that you can do to, 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 to make a difference to your, to your playback. So the next thing I'd like to draw your attention to is to the render cache. This is another thing that you can do. It's just, again, in playback, you come down to render cache, come down to one of these other options other than none, smart or user. For most people using DaVinci Resolve, unless you know exactly why you want to be on a user setting, I would select smart. And essentially what DaVinci Resolve is gonna do is it's gonna look at everything that in the timeline that it thinks it needs to render. These are typically things like noise reduction, uh, certain color effects, certain fusion effects, uh, transitions, certain things like that. Anything that it feels that it needs to render, it will render. And it's doing that as we can see now. So I've got a little red bar above my timeline and so slowly it is going blue as it renders. And the nice thing is one, I have got it rendered. I should be able to play that back at no problem at all getting full playback nice and smooth. Now, I appreciate that's not always ideal because you are having to wait for things to render and also the render cache quality will depend on, on how, how nice this experience is, is for you as well. So let's go down to project settings. Once in project settings, we'll grab the project settings window and we'll come across the master settings and we'll come down to optimize media and render cache. I'm gonna come back to optimize media later, so that's a little spoiler, so let's stay tuned for that one, but Render cache format is here, and we can select our render cache format in a number of different formats. I'm on a Mac, so I have access to ProRes as well, but DNX HR LB, or you've got the ProRes L422 LT. If you want to render to a cache that's slightly lower quality, that's absolutely fine. There's no nothing wrong with something like ProRes 422 LT for your render cache. I happen to be rendering to 42HQ just because I prefer that. And actually, if I wanted to, I could use my cache media to help speed up my delivery later on. So that's a little pro tip. If you actually have your render cache go to a format that you'd be quite happy to deliver in, then you can actually use your higher res render cache to render out and that speeds up your delivery later on. Worth knowing that where the, the working folders that are listed below here show the render cache and where it's going. So the cache 
file location is essentially where these renders are going to be stored. So do make sure that you're storing it somewhere that makes sense. It will very quickly fill up your main drive if you're not very careful. So I recommend having your render stored on a separate drive ideally. If you have plenty of space on a fast internal SSD, then, then there's nothing wrong with them going there either. I, I personally think that's fine. But again, it's just really a case of making sure you don't end up running out of space. That's that's my, my main concern really here. So I would make sure that you've got that stored somewhere sensible. And then once obviously you've got a render going, it will be a little bit better. Playback, no problem at all. So that's the second thing that you can try. Third thing that you can also try is optimize media. Now that's a really good option too. And it's very easy again to do inside of DaVinci Resolve. So first of all, I'm just gonna come down to my project settings again, and I'm gonna come back to my master settings and come down to the optimized media and render cache box. Now, when I'm down here, you see you've got two optimized media options, the resolution and the format. So you can, and by default, it's actually set to choose automatically. And if, it, if you allow DaVinci Resolve to choose automatically, what it will do is it will look at the timeline resolution and it will optimize your media based on the timeline resolution. So things that are higher than the timeline resolution, it will render to an optimized media format. Anything that's lower than the timeline resolution, it will not touch. So this is important to note because if you have footage that's maybe in a just an awkward compressed format like H.264, but it's shot at the same resolution as the timeline, DaVinci Resolve won't actually optimize that media if you allow it to choose automatically. So I would normally recommend picking your media resolution. So if you are shooting in 4K, then shooting obviously by half, you'll be going to 1080. If you go to quarter, you'll be going to 720 and so on. Now, I've used quarter and half before, absolutely no problem at all. My, my normal default is to half because I tend to shoot in 4K and 1080p works fair, fine enough in my computer. So that's absolutely fine. So I go to half. Optimized media format, again, it's a question of choice, really. I've gone to ProRes 42HQ just because I've actually then normally will uh, use 42HQ to do the grade as well. I've got no problem grading 42HQ for the most part, especially if I'm on a 8-bit codec, it's no problem at all. But if you wanted, you could make that optimized media format 422LT, even a proxy mode, something really light, because that's going to actually save on storage space rather than going for something a high res version like uh, HQ or even 4444. So I would tend to go for something that is suitable for your workflow at the time. So whether you feel like you don't want to optimize twice or you're just really worried about editing, not grading, then I would choose that dependent on, on what your workflow suits. Again, you've got DNX HD, you've got Cineform options as well. So you can choose your media resolution, your media format there. And once you've done that, again, bear in mind that the optimized media gets stored at the cache files location. Now, what you'll actually find is it will create a folder that you can go and find called optimized media, and it's stored with your project in your DaVinci Resolve, wherever you set this cache file location to be. And you can easily sort of skim through, look at the info file, and then work out what that optimized media relates to, and simply delete that folder if you want to. But it's important to know that, again, you're not going to do any harm, but you will have to re-optimize your media when you come back to your project file. To generate optimized media, it's really very easy, and I've got a whole bunch of clips on here. Some of them are optimized and some of them are not. Well, first of all, how do I know if I have got optimized media or not? Well, it's very easy to come up here. If you're in the thumbnail view already in your media pool, find your media folder where you've got some media, change it into the list view, and then on the header, right-click and come down to optimize media and turn it on. Now you've got a optimized media column that you can just simply rearrange to make it a bit more easy to see. And you can see that I've got a bunch of clips here that I've got no optimized media and I've got a couple that are half res and a few more that are not and so on and so forth. And I can actually sort that and work out which ones are half res and which ones are not. So now if I want to, I can get this particular clip here and let me see which one that is by slicking, jumping back over. So it's this particular shot we've got here. I can right click it and hit generate optimized media. And I simply hit that and DaVinci Resolve will run off and it will generate that media for me. And it does take a little while and unfortunately it's not something that happens in the background. So it is something that I would recommend you do over the night or whether you're having your lunch or something like that. And again, you can also do a number of clips all at once. You can do a whole bin at once if you want to as well. It's no problem at all. But it's important just to note that it does take that time and it is something that is a foreground process. So if I wanted to, for example, I could just find all of my non-optimized medias simply come down, shift to select them all, and then generate the optimized media 
for all of those. I'm not going to do that at this point because it would take a bit too long, but you've got the idea that you can generate media like that, create your optimized media like that. No problem at all. Now, if, if in a situation you've opened a project that you know you have optimized media for, but unfortunately it's not playing back correctly and it doesn't seem to be working correctly, and when you go to the list view, you can see that you've got none next to it. What you can actually do is you can just simply right click come down and rediscover optimized media and DaVinci Resolve will go off and it will look for any optimized media allocated to that project file and reattach it if need be. And the other thing we just need to mention about optimized media is that in the playback menu, if you come up to the playback menu, you'll see two options here. Use optimized media if available and delete optimized media. Now, what we want to ensure is that use optimized media if available is ticked. And you'll see now that it has a check next to it, meaning that it is ticked, meaning that DaVinci Resolve will use the optimized media if it is available to me. If it isn't available, it will just simply do its normal playback. If I want to stop using optimized media, I can simply turn that off. And then none of this optimized media is gonna get referenced in the playback when I hit spacebar. So for most part, I'd leave that on. If you want to delete the optimized media, because it is a little bit easier to find the optimized media and delete it by just simply deleting it here than going to the folder structure and deleting it manually, it takes a little bit longer. So I would just simply go into the project, delete the optimized media, and then delete the optimized media for the project. I'm not gonna do that on this occasion. But that's my tip number three is using optimized media. And my fourth recommendation for speeding up your DaVinci Resolve performance is looking at your timeline resolution. Now, what you'll have noticed is that we have this timeline that's playing back and occasionally it gets a little bit stuttery at times because we've got lots of effects and things going on and it does take a little bit of time sometimes to just get going. So one of the things that you can do is actually look at your timeline resolutions. Now this, if I come down to my project settings, and look at the master settings, you can see that the timeline format for my project is 4K. So it's 3840 by 2160, 25 frames per second, okay? And I'm just gonna show you as well that in my timeline that I'm currently in, if I right click it, timeline, timeline settings, you can see that we've got a 4K timeline here, okay? So what you can do in DaVinci Resolve is simply change your timeline to a different resolution. So if you change your timeline resolution, make sure your video monitor matches that and hit save, then what you'll see is this timeline resolution has been updated to 1920, 1080. And now when I play back, obviously everything's had to recache because I have my smart caching on at the moment still, let me turn that off. But you'll see now that also we're playing back, but we're playing back now at 1920, 1080. So that is another thing that you can do to speed up your playback. And it does actually make a dramatic difference. But the great thing is that DaVinci Resolve is resolution independent, which means that changing timeline resolution like this isn't actually gonna affect anything. So in this case, we've got this particular title and everything sort of set up and it's 1920 by 1080. We've got a color solid underneath it. And when I change this back, when I'm ready to export to my 4K and hit save, Everything just rescales and matches up perfectly because I'm working in a 16 by nine aspect. So the beauty with that is that now, if you look again in my settings, I'm in a 3840 by 2160 timeline. So, so I think it's a really nice tip and often one that's overlooked is actually just changing your timeline resolution can make such a huge dramatic impact to the power at which you play back. I often work on a laptop and I will drop my resolution quite dramatically when I'm editing just to get that nice speed. And then obviously when it comes to exporting it, I'll just make sure that I have changed my timeline back and I'm exporting at the resolution I would like to be doing so. So that's my tip number four. But tip number five, well, it's actually the fact that all of these can be used in conjunction with one another. So the great thing is you don't have to have one or the other. You can drop your resolution of your timeline. You can put on proxy mode. You can encourage the smart render cache and you can have optimized media and you can do all those things things at once and when they all come together to work seamlessly you get that nice smooth playback that you've been after all along. So there we are those are my top five recommendations for how to get smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve 16 if you're struggling on a laptop or desktop that's particularly slow. If that was useful to you do let me know in the comments below which particular tip you found useful and how it's managed to help you. I'd love to know exactly what your experience was and I do read all the comments so please leave me one and I'd love to read it. Otherwise guys hit the like button as you're headed out just because I would really appreciate knowing if this was a good video and if you do hit the like button then let me know and I can make more content the same. If you didn't like it hit a dislike. I don't mind because it just tells me that I need to improve what I'm doing. So do let me know and I'll try my best to make sure we get nice content out for you the very next video. Other than that I'll leave you to your day. Thanks ever so much for watching and I will see you in the very next video. Bye for now.